Hey everyone, it's Megan here from Megan Makes Do, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make the Tobin Throw. Um, if it looks familiar, it's because previously I have made the Tobin Hat and Scarf Set. So I'm using the same stitch, just in different colors and using a different yarn. So for this tutorial, I am using my leftover yarn. I used Lion Brand's Pound of Love in black and white. Um, you will also need a size H, which is a five millimeter crochet hook. This one is from Knitter's Pride, which I got from Jimmy Bean's Wool. Um, you'll also need a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle for when you finish. So I'm gonna be making a small little sample swatch size for this tutorial, but you can find the full written pattern at the link in the description below to my blog or as a PDF in my shop and also as a Lion Brand kit at lionbrand.com. Okay, so to start our Tobin throw, you'll see that in the pattern, you're going to be starting with color A, which is black, um, and you're going to just make a slip knot on your hook, and we're going to chain, for the full pattern, you'll chain 200 chains, um, but the pattern is a multiple of six plus one. So for this tutorial, I am going to chain 20, which when we go back through and start row one, I'll have 19 stitches total, which 18 is a multiple of six plus one is 19. So go ahead and chain the full amount of stitches. So for you, it'll be 200. Okay, so I have my 20 chains. And then I know it's a little bit difficult to see with the black yarn, but hopefully um, you have enough knowledge and skills already in crochet that you can easily follow along. So we're gonna skip the first chain and for row one, starting in the second chain from the hook, we're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across our row. Okay, so we're down to our last two stitches here. And now we're ready to start row two. So row one, we're just making a simple single crochet row. For row two, we're going to chain three. In this pattern, our chain three counts as a stitch, but our chain ones do not count. And then in the first stitch, we're going to double crochet two. So this is gonna be like a half shell on the edges here. Then we're gonna skip two stitches and single crochet in the next. Skip two stitches, and now we're gonna shell stitch, which is five double crochet into the same stitch. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then we're gonna skip two again, single crochet, skip two, and shell. And we're gonna do this all the way across our row until we have three stitches left. So that's four and five. So I'm almost to the end of my row here. I skip two single crochet. And now I have three stitches left at the end of my row. So I skip two and I work three double crochet into the last stitch. So again, if you're following along while you make the full size blanket, you obviously will have many more stitches than I do. Okay. So we've gotten to the end. Now before I finish my last yarn over on that last double crochet, I'm going to be switching to the white. So you'll switch colors at the end of each row right before that last yarn over. Okay. So I'm gonna pick up my white and I'm just going to switch colors and change over to the white in that last yarn over. Okay, then I'm gonna chain one, and this is gonna be our row three. We're gonna turn, and our chain ones do not count as a stitch. 
Now, for this pattern, I recommend that you don't have so many ends to weave in at the end. We're gonna carry our the opposite color of what we're working with all along, kind of like you would with tapestry crochet. So I'm bringing my black yarn kind of over to the front so that I know I'm gonna be working around the black strand. So in the first stitch, I'm gonna single crochet. I'm gonna make sure that this black yarn is over my hook so I can catch it and carry it through the whole row. So we single crochet into the first stitch, then we chain two, and now we're gonna double crochet five together. It's almost like the reverse of a shell stitch, making sure that we are always going around this black strand of yarn as we go. So to double crochet five, I'm gonna yarn over, insert my hook into the next stitch, making sure that my black yarn is on top of my hook. Yarn over and drop a loop, yarn over, draw through two. Now I have two loops on my hook. And I'm gonna repeat that four more times. Again, always making sure that I'm catching this black yarn just as I would if I was doing tapestry crochet. So I wanna make sure that we have double crocheted together five. So at the end, I should have six loops on my hook, our beginning loop here and then the five double crochet stitches that we haven't quite finished. So we're almost doing like half of the double crochet stitch. And now we're gonna yarn over and draw through all six loops on our hook to finish off that five double crochet together. Then we're gonna chain two again. Again, making sure that this black yarn is being carried throughout. We're gonna single crochet in the next stitch which will be the top of the shell stitch from the row below. Then we're gonna chain two again and repeat that. So we're gonna do our double crochet five together over the next five stitches, making sure to always catch the black yarn around. So we're crocheting around the black yarn strand and into all five of those stitches. And then we're gonna yarn over and pull through all six loops on our hook. And you'll see sometimes it'll kind of bunch up. And so you can simply just pull your yarn a little bit. And what I recommend is as you go, and it is a little tricky to get the hang of when you're working with a larger swatch, but you can just kind of tug on your, on your piece to make sure that that carried yarn isn't getting too tight and causing your piece to bunch up. So then we've chained two, we single crochet into the next stitch, chain two, and then we're going to, again, double crochet five together. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then we finish off that double crochet five together. We chain two again. And to finish this row, we are going to single crochet into the top of our chain three from the previous row. So I like to kind of go into my chain three stitch. Sometimes it can be a little tight. Oop. I always like to make up sure that I'm picking up two loops on that chain three. Again, going over top and catching the carry yarn. We're going to single crochet, but again, we wanna switch back to the black. So before we do our final yarn over of that single crochet, I'm just going to switch over to black. And then you can kind of pull that white yarn so that you pull your stitch a little bit tighter. Okay, so we've worked row three. Now we're just going to be repeating rows two and three over and over again, always carrying the other colored yarn as we go. So I'll show you what that looks like when we go back to a row two repeat. Again, we're gonna start with a chain three and then turn. Hopefully my yarn doesn't get too tangled up here. 
Um, when working with two colors, it can get a little bit tricky. So try to untangle your yarn after the end of each row. So again, I'm gonna take this white yarn and hopefully you can see this okay. So I'm gonna be working with the black yarn. I'm gonna carry the white yarn. So I bring it kind of behind to finish off that single crochet stitch here. So I'm gonna bring it behind and then kind of towards the front so I know that I'm catching it each time. So again, we start with two double crochet into the first stitch. Remember here our chain three counts as a stitch. Okay, and then we're going to skip two. So skip those two chain stitches, which is here and here. I know a lot of times people will wanna kind of go into this little hole here, but that's actually not where you wanna stick your hook. You wanna stick your hook over here because this is a chain stitch. Then we're going to single crochet into the top of the double crochet five together, always making sure that our white yarn now is over our hook so we're catching it. We're gonna single crochet. Then we're gonna skip those two chains and we're gonna shell stitch into the next stitch, which is a single crochet stitch. And here you can see my white is kind of bunching up. I can just pull it a little bit tighter. So I'm gonna work my shell stitch, which is five double crochet. Unroll a couple more, a little bit more black yarn. So that's three, this is four and five. Again, always pulling my white yarn along the top so I'm going over the strand as I work. I'm gonna skip two and single crochet into the top of the double crochet five together. Skip two and shell stitch into that single crochet. Again, skip two, single crochet, always making sure to catch that yarn. And we finish with three double crochet into the last stitch. And again, when we get to our last yarn over of that third stitch, we're going to pick up the white yarn that we have just carried through. I like to kind of give it a little tug before I do that just so I make sure that this white yarn isn't bunching up either. And then I'm going to switch over to the white, chain one and turn and I'm ready to do my row three repeat. Okay, so hopefully you're kind of seeing, you will see a little bit of the carried yarn through but it's not going to affect your pattern overall. Um, so again, we just start our row three repeat, bring that black yarn in the front or whatever color you're using, um, go like around the back. And now we're gonna start with a single crochet, chain two, and then work our double crochet five together, always making sure to catch the black yarn, we're working into the stitch and around the carried yarn. So like I said, if you're doing the larger, you know, you're not just doing a sample size like mine, you might have to kind of tug as you go. I tended to, you know, after a couple of these kind of stitches, I'd tug on it and make sure that my black yarn wasn't getting bunched up or my white yarn wasn't getting bunched up, trying to keep it laying flat along the blanket. If you find that carrying the yarn is too difficult or you're not able to get the right kind of tension, you definitely can just cut off the yarn and start again. Um, just know you will have a lot of ends to weave in as long as you don't mind dealing with that. You're good to go. Whatever you prefer is totally fine. I just prefer to carry my yarn because I don't want to have to weave in all those ends <laughs> at the end. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just repeating rows two and three all the way 
until I'm finished. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna do a few more rows for you and then I will show you how to add the fringe at the end. So here we've gotten to the last stitch. Again, we work a single crochet into the top of that chain three space, kind of give it a tug. And then we can switch to our color A again, which is black. Okay, so here you can see I've added a few more rows and I'm ready to finish off. So I'm on my last single crochet of a row three repeat. So I'm going to change to color A, which for me is black. And then we're gonna just chain one for this last row here. And then we're gonna turn. And then I like to bring my yarn over, my white yarn over. I'm not gonna carry it all the way through because I don't have to, I don't need it for the other side. But I like to get this finished loop here like I have in the previous rows. So I'm gonna start by single crocheting in that first stitch so I catch that. And then I'm just going to leave a tail here for weaving in the white, but I'm not going to be single crocheting around the white yarn. I'm not carrying that across and you don't have to either. So now we are just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way across. Um, and I can show you how I did it. If you prefer to go into each chain stitch, you can. Um, I tend to go just around this first chain stitch and then into the next since there's a nice hole there. And then into the top of the five double crochet together. I go around the next one, but into the second one. I don't know why, you can do it however you want. You can go around the chains, into the chains, do a combo like I do, however you wanna do it. We're just single crocheting all the way across this row in color A so that our ends end in the same color. Okay. So just take your time with this row. You can decide if you wanna go in to the chains or around them, it's totally up to you. But make sure that you end, you'll want to end with 199 stitches, just how you started. Okay, so we've gotten to the end. I can cut off my black yarn and pull my loop through. And that's how we make our Tobin throw with carrying yarn in between. So you can see when we're done with our swatch, you don't really see the carried yarn unless you're really looking for it. You're still going to get this beautiful um, two colored pattern with these interlocking shell stitches. So um, also I should note that this is the wrong side of the work. If you're seeing um, like the backs of the five double crochet together, this is the back of the work. This is the right side of the work. Um, but both sides look amazing to me. I love them. This is like my new favorite blanket. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and weave these ends in and then I'll show you how to cut your fringe and add that and where to place it on either side, the bottom of your blanket and the top of your blanket. Okay, so I've woven in the ends. Um, I'll also let you know I did weave all my ends to the back side. Um, that way it's nice and clean on the front. Um, and for our fringe, we're just gonna need to cut some pieces of color A. So I have my little cutting mat here. Um, you can also just use a simple ruler or tape measure, whichever you prefer. Um, and I'm gonna cut about 15 inch lengths of yarn. So I'm just gonna kind of lay my yarn out from the 15 to the one. And once I have one cut, um, I can kind of use the first one I've cut as a template. So just kind of line those up and try to keep your yarn loose. Try not to tug on it too much because um, you want your yarn to try to be as close to the same lengths as possible. 
Um, I know cutting fringe is not an exact science. I've, if you know of an easier way to do it, definitely let me know, but I just like to cut them all the same length. Um, so for your blanket, you're going to need, I believe, 528 15 inch lengths of color A. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut a few for mine. I won't need as many, obviously, since my swatch is a lot smaller. Um, but same idea here, and then I'll show you where and how many to attach on each end of your blanket. Okay, so once you have all your fringe cut, you will need four groups of four. Um, and these are gonna go on the corners of our piece. So what I like to do is just line them up and fold it in half. And then taking the folded end here, kind of hold it in my thumb like this. I'm going to go into the last stitch on the corner here, working from the back of the work, it's like inserting my hook from the back to the front. And then I just grab the loop, pull that through. And then I kind of just pull those strands through the loop and then pull it tight. Okay. So we're gonna do that in each of the four corners with only four strands of yarn. Your other strands of yarn, you'll need to have in groups of eight but we wanna have a little bit less on the ends since we're going to be knotting them again. We don't want our knots to have too, any extra strands in there. So again, just pull your folded end through and then pull the strands through the little loop and that will secure them in place. And then we just do the same thing on the opposite side, just in those corners. So four strands, four corners. Again, let's go into just that corner stitch. Oops. Make sure I'm bringing up all four pieces. Pull it through and pull it tight. And my last set. Making sure we're going through that corner. Oops, back to front here. Okay. Pull it through and pull it tight. Okay, so now, oops, it's a little off center, but that's okay, I can fix that later. <laughs> I wanna show you where to place your groups of eight. So here I have a group of eight. I'm gonna try to get my ends lined up the best I can here. and then fold it in half. Oops, one end got loose. Okay, so then same thing, we're still gonna do that pull through method. So on the bottom of our blanket where we started, um, where our shell stitches are, we're gonna go into the bottom of each shell stitch in between our two corners. So I'm kind of going around the whole first row, that row one of single crochet. And then just pulling through, pulling it tight. And then one thing I did notice is some of these bigger strands with the eight. Um, I have to kind of pull on each individual strand of yarn to really get that tightened up. So then I went through on each one and just pulled it, pulled each strand individually to get it nice and tight, just like that. 
Okay, so let's take our next group of eight, fold it in half, and then again, going back to front, we're gonna pull all the folded loops through, open it up, grab our strands and pull through, And then to get it tight, I just pull on each individual strand. I just give it a gentle little tug to tighten that up there. Okay, so then we want them to be lined up with the top of our blanket. So if you follow your shell, shell stitch, oops, kind of all the way up, we want to place our next ones kind of in this area here. So this single crochet stitch here, this white one, um, we kind of want to put it into this stitch here. So they're going to go in between our double crochet five together stitches. So I'll grab my next bundle of eight and I kind of go again going around this single crochet row from back to front pull it through and then pull it tight Whoops, one of my strands got loose, hold on. Let me take this out. And try again. So yeah, if one of your strands gets loose, um, that's why I'm like, I didn't tighten up mine until towards the end, just to make sure that everything looked right. All right, second try. Go into that single crochet stitch. I think I have all of them this time. There we go. Pull it through. And then we can tighten up our strands by just tugging on them individually. Okay, just like that. So now we have one more to place right here. Let me get my strands lined up. And I love the look of the fringe. It just, it is a bit time consuming. So make sure that you have a TV show on in the background or something to listen to so that you're not bored. Okay, so going through that single crochet stitch, we're gonna pull it through. Grab our yarn and then pull it tight. And again, we can tighten it up by pulling on each strand individually. Okay, so now we're gonna add those extra knots. Um, if you like the look of just the fringe like this, you can go ahead and trim up your ends and then you're done. If you like the look of the double knot in there, um, that's what I'm gonna show you next. So we have, we're gonna start at the end. We have our eight strands here, and then we're gonna pull eight strands. We're gonna basically separate these out. So there's four, six, eight, and eight. And separate our next one, five, six, Seven, eight. 
trying to get them to lay nicely. Let's see. This is five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. And then we're going to knot the end and the first group of eight here. So we just hold them together. I like to wrap around two fingers. And then I kind of go through. I like to just put my two fingers through my thumb and my pointer finger through and grab the ends. And then I pull them. And you can adjust them by pulling on these strands here and then pulling up like that. So don't pull too tight before you fully adjust them. Okay, and then we take the next set. So eight from this one and eight from that one. Make sure I still have my eight. There we go. And I did this with my blanket kind of hanging over the edge of a table. Um, you can also do it flat like this, but I found hanging it I don't know, it was just easier to separate my strands out that way. Um, and they weren't getting in the way of each other. But you're basically just pulling eight from each tassel or set of fringe and then knotting them together. And then try to get them in as straight of a line as possible. So then we'll do our last set here. So it may take a little bit of adjusting your knots until you get them exactly how you want. Um, but you would do this all the way across both edges of your blanket. And then once you have them all finished, I like to use a rotary cutter on a mat and I just trim off the ends so that my fringe is all straight across here. Um, so then you just repeat that on the other side of your blanket with your other set of fringe and then trim up your fringe and your Tobin blanket is finished. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I hope that you found it helpful. Again, if you wanna follow along with the written pattern, you can find it for free on my blog at meganmakesyou.com. I'll put the link to it below, as well as links to all of the materials that I used in today's tutorial. And again, you can always find a printable PDF version of this pattern in my shop or the complete kit um, that includes the digital pattern plus all the yarn that you'll need from lionbrand.com. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so that you never miss a thing. Thanks for watching.